Today I'm going to show you guys how to use distilled water to put your mycelium into a dormant state so it can be stored for anywhere from 3 to 10 years. Here's how you do it. You're going to need to get yourself some centrifuge tubes like this. These are 100 milliliters. I'll link these below. You're going to need some distilled water. And then you're going to take your distilled water and fill up however many different cultures you want to make. So if you've got four strains, it's a good idea to do backups of each one just in case you have anything that goes bad on you. So I'm doing four strains, so I do eight tubes. So I'll fill each one of these centrifuge tubes up about three quarters full with distilled water. And then I'm going to put them into a small jar, something like this. For the sake of the video, I'm just going to show you guys these four. What you want to do when you put these, these tubes back on, or excuse me, the caps back on the tubes, is you don't want to screw them all the way down. You want to actually leave them a little bit loose so you can have a little bit of air exchange in there. You don't want to, you don't want to trap off all the air in there while it's going through the pressure cooker. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pressure cook these um, for 30 minutes at 15 PSI. And I'll show you guys how that process works now. What I do with my pressure cooker is uh, I just have got a little bit of water in here and then I'm going to put my jars inside the water um, because the water is going to be, it'll boil up and it'll boil over and I'll end up with water inside my jars. I don't want to have any of that extra water inside of my tubes. I put distilled water in there. I don't want my normal tap water that I'm going to be using to get inside of those tubes. So you could cover it with tin foil, but because I have them in jars that are actually taller than the tubes, the water can only splash down on top of them. So it's not going to actually splash up and go inside. So uh, just keep that in mind. If you're using a jar that's actually smaller than your centrifuge tube, then you're going to want to put maybe a little piece of tin foil over that centrifuge tube. So light your burner. You're going to want to uh, heat the or get your, boil, your water boiling and build pressure inside of your pressure cooker. And then once the pressure builds up and the, this, is, this little um, valve right here has popped up, you want to see some steam coming out of this valve over here. Let that steam off for 15 minutes before you put your 15 pound rocker on there and start building pressure. Now that that's popped up, have some steam coming out of this valve right here. Let that go for 15 minutes and then put your 15 pound knocker on and build up pressure. Okay, it's been 15 minutes, so you put your 15 pound knocker on and wait for the uh, pressure to build up to 15 PSI and then you're gonna wanna use your, uh, your heat to stabilize it so it just maintains that 15 PSI. Okay, so you can see it starts to knock just a little bit, so now you wanna bring your heat down to stabilize that. You're just looking for that knocker to just barely be moving or not at all and make sure that uh, that needle is pointed right at 15 PSI and you're good to go. We're going to leave it here for 30 minutes. In the 30 minutes we'll turn the heat off and then we'll let it cool down. Okay, it's been 40 or it's been 30 minutes so we're going to turn this off. We'll let the steam come out of this. I'm just going to let it come down slowly. It'll probably take an hour or so before I take it down and put it in front of the flow hood. If you wanted to speed that process up a little bit, you could take the knocker off. Just use something to cover up your hands because it'll be really hot steam coming out of there. And then we'll pick it back up with how to, uh, how to inoculate or how to put our hyphae into the distilled water. Okay, so pressure cooking is all done. We've uh, I've taken the centrifuge tubes out of the pressure cooker and put them in front of my flow hood to cool off. Um, I got the old packer, the packaging that they originally came in. I put them back in the packaging to stand up straight. They're a little easier to work with than they are to work with in the jars themselves. So uh, I've just taken them out of the jars and that's kind of what, that's all you've missed so far in the process. Everything else has just been them cooling off. So from here, what we want to do is you want to get yourself a little bowl like that. Um, something small enough that you can just pour a little alcohol in and not be too wasteful. And then you're going to need to get yourself some pipettes. And we're going to want to clean those pipettes. So start off with spraying them with alcohol. Obviously spray our own hands with alcohol. I'll take this pipe in and I'll get the alcohol on the inside and I'll twist it around as I'm turning it upside down and continue to twist it around as I spit the alcohol back out of it. And I'll spray this off real good. Take a little alcohol and put it inside there. If I don't put the alcohol and squeeze it in there, 
this the way that my my uh, bowl is, the uh, high bed will actually fall out. So if I squeeze a little alcohol and leave that in the bottom, it puts a little weight down there. So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to take our agar plate, the one that we want to take um, the sample of our culture, and we want to put in for long-term storage. We're going to take that plate and we're going to get this nice and cleaned off. Take that top off of there. Then what we want to do is take the lid. I'm clean my hands one more time just to be sure. What we do is take the lid off of the centrifuge tube. And then we're going to take some alcohol, or excuse me, take some, some of the distilled water, some of the sterilized distilled water, suck it up in the pipette, and I'm going to dump it directly onto the mycelium in the agar plate. And then I'm going to take my pipette and I'm going to drag it along the top of the mycelium to kind of get the, the pieces of mycelium to release. Those pieces of mycelium are called hyphae. And what you want to do is, once you get, them, get enough of that stuff to release, you're going to suck the water that's on in the top of this agar plate. You're going to suck that water back up and you're going to put it back into the centrifuge tube, into that other distilled water. And what that's going to do is it's going to, the distilled water has no minerals and because we've neutralized or sterilized it, it's got no minerals or uh, no nutrients rather. So it's got nothing for the mycelium to live on. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna go dormant in there. And that'll allow the mycelium to live for somewhere between three and 10 years. So it's a really good solution for long-term storage. Once you're done, just take your pipette, put it to the side, you can put your lid back on. We're pretty much done with that tray, with that plate anyway, so there's nothing we can do. Um, and nothing to, no reason to try to salvage it rather. We're going to take our cap and we're going to put this on here really nice and tight. We don't want there to be air that gets into here. So we want it nice and tight. And then you can put um, some parafilm tape on here. Uh, it probably makes more sense to actually store these in a plastic bag because we're not looking for air to get in here. We don't want any fresh air exchange. We don't want any nutrients to be in here. We just want the night mycelium to be in this distilled sterile water so it goes dormant. And then when we're going to bring it back to life, what we're going to do is just put it onto an agar plate just take a little bit out of here, put it onto the agar plate, and give it, uh, you know, five to seven days, and you'll start seeing the mycelium will come back to life again. And for storage, um, like I was saying, put it in a plastic bag and just put it on a shelf. If you're going to be in a really hot conditions, um, it can go into a refrigerator, but it's, uh, it's, it's better off just sitting at a room temperature between, you know, like 65 and 80 degrees, somewhere in there. Uh, if it's going to be over, you know, 95, 100 degrees, then definitely find, find a way to get it into a refrigerator.